Hey, what's going on, good, beautiful people out there in YouTube and land? It is I, the bad wolf, the man in black. Well, I guess black and gold, but anyway, black and gold, or black and yellow, black and yellow. All right, anyway, so uh, what's this particular video about? Well, this particular video is about the right to travel binder. Now, I have made other ones of these before, but I want to make sure everybody is up to par on what they should have in there. This is literally the real one that I keep in my vehicle, okay? Now, before we get into it, make sure that you guys join the Bad Wolf Media channel on YouTube. It's my backup channel, all right? Join me on that one because I'm going to be talking about everything in casual on there, from health to this to that to uh, technology and science, all these weird, all, all the stuff, okay? So join me on that one. I'm going to, if I see something on YouTube I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about it. This is what I really think or how I move. So join me over there as well. Go to blacksite32.com and join for our newsletter, okay? Once we have higher numbers, I'm going to start putting more things out there for people. So join us over there. Join the, the newsletter group. And for all of my other social media platforms, Blackside32 on the social media page. You can see whichever ones I'm I'm on out there. And for love of God, whether it's me or somebody else, do not fall for people pretending to be me. I've seen people out there pretending to be Yusuf L and Eternal Zion um, across the board, like hands down, like eight different accounts. And, you know, it's not them. So people do the same thing with me, even in my own groups. You have to be careful in how they spell the name. But understand this, I'm never, ever, ever going to ask you for money in these groups. It's either going to be me through here. Hey, send some donations in, which, by the way, send some donations in. I appreciate those, no matter what the amount is. Um, or it's going to be through blacksite32.com. So do not, I don't want to hear any more stories about you got ripped off from somebody pretending to be me or some other celebrity or whatever else. None of, no people who do what we do are going to sit down and take the time to contact you in your in your DMs and try to get you in, to invest or to send them some money like that. It's not them. It's not. Okay. So especially when it comes to me, it's definitely not me. I don't have that. I, I don't even have that kind of time for that at all. All right. Um, what else we got? So this is me filming on while well, I'm on vacation. I'm actually home at this point. Um, so yeah, I should just be relaxing, but I don't know, things pop up and I just go, Let, let's make a video. So, mm -hmm. all right. So remember your normal key things to write to travel are going to be getting a trust, which we have those on blacksite32.com free to use and putting your vehicle into a private trust, ensuring that the vehicle's name is not your last name, but something made up something completely private. You're not going to register your trust. You're going to make sure that there's no zip code inside the trust when you mention an address. You're going to want to make sure that you label that trust as being private and foreign to the United States, operating under either your own nation, another country's nation, or another country, um, or the Constitution for the United States of America. But you're operating privately, and you are foreign in relation to the state's um, so you want to have that in there. You want to get it notarized, uh, preferably under Jurex. You don't have to. I would. Um, you're going to want to close out your driver's license with their proper form. All right. Uh, which do I have? I was just working on Wisconsin, so I actually have that one here. Yeah. Um, I've done for Florida. I've done California. So. Jump over here and beat up on Wisconsin because I already have that up a little bit. Um, it doesn't have, I mean, each state is different. Like it's that some people will contact me and have them do their particular state. So, um, switch your screen. All right. So, here we go. All right. So in Wisconsin, they have one called a voluntary temporary surrender of license. I volunteer to surrender mine, and then you label which one you want, you're closing out. So normally it's just your 
you know, uh, all right, hold on. It's, oh, here they want a reason. Okay, so I would go other, the class, usually, what is it, like D, driver's license, driving, motorcycle, uh, commercial, I'm not sure what the rest of those are. For other, I would put in things like either um, loss of citizenship, okay, or non-resident. national okay something like that um you could also put in uh loss of residency dash no longer a resident okay and if you want you can write it out over here as well because what is this going to tell? You, you know, you get pulled over and you show an officer this, so you don't have a license. Nope. I Nope. So you can't ticket me because I don't have a license. You have to have that contract in place. So you're going to put your name in here. All uppercase lettering because that's what we're dealing with. And then your driver's license. If you guys didn't know, your driver's license is usually going to start with the last uh, name's initial. So it'll be like S... 170 or whatever else you guys got going on, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. Sign it, date it to the day that you are going to start to do right to travel. You're going to print this document and have one in your car and one in your travel binder. Okay? The next thing you want to have is when you give up your plates. License, plates, cancellation, application. You want to cancel the plates. Fill this out the same way. Now, me personally, I might put my name in there, but I'm not going to put an address because I've seen where they try to use the address to form joinder and say, oh, see, you've used your address. Here's your zip code. So me, I personally will either black out my last name and give partial information but if you have the VIN, which is what they're going to run, okay, they might be able to still pull up your old information anyway, which at the end of the day, that's not a big deal, you know, but I'm just not going to give it to give them more than what I have to give them. There's no need for it. So I would leave the address blank and just put the name in here, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this is something else that I would have in my vehicle. All right. So. If you, you're you going to create your plates, the name on top of the plates is where the vehicle's registered. So that should be the name of the trust on top of the plates. If you want, you can go to the DOT, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, apply for a DOT number. The very last option on the first question will say private vehicle travel. You check that, you get your DOT number, and you can put that on your plates, or you can make up your own stuff for your plates. Totally up to you. I will say that with having a DOT number, it does make it easier to get insurance. If your insurance company acts like they don't know what you're talking about, or doesn't have a private or foreign traveler program, then what you're going to want to do is call around or go on Google or whatever else, and you're going to look up insurance for foreign drivers, insurance for private drivers. And you can also go and get a bond, okay? So you should have a bond in your travel thing in case you do some damage and you don't have regular insurance. Have a bond, okay? So let's see what else. Um, put the plates on, so you've canceled your driver's license. You've got a copy of that in your binder. You've... Um, used your, you found your particular state's voluntary surrender of license, whatever they call it in your state. If they don't have a form, then you make your own and get it notarized and date it, okay? Um, for me, I created also a separate document that I sent to the DMV and the DOT headquarters where... I'm 
this is my vehicle's foreign registration. I made it official. I even have my own corporate seal on the bottom there. So why? Because this allows me to comply with our particular state, their coding. In my particular state, it's code of uh, legislation code for the state that you live in, non-resident vehicle, non-resident registration or foreign vehicle registration. Look up your state's code, print that page. All right, I know I've got mine in here. It's actually right here. Okay, so you print that out. And here it says, except as to foreign owned vehicles that are to be registered in this state, any vehicle that is registered in another jurisdiction, doesn't say another state, just says, well, even if it did say another state, state just means anywhere else but them. This vehicle is exempt from the laws of the state providing the registration of the vehicle if all applies. The vehicle carries a registration plate indicating the vehicle's registration in the other jurisdiction. Mine is registered to Levitica National Government. And I've got my family logo on here and I've got the code for being an IPP and I'm saying I'm exempt. So I so far have complied. It's foreign. The name of my trust is foreign. The vehicle is owned by a non-resident. All right. So you want to have. An affidavit in yours. Fine mine. Okay. So there's mine also with my family logo and my seal for my nation. Um, that's just one of them. But you want to have in there a notarized from the bank statement. So I did my own. I thought I had my other, oh, it might be in my, my backup one. I don't see it in here. So my bad, it's on me. But the other one I have is my own declaration. So it's really good enough. But it should, you, it's good to have something from their side, the public stating that as well. Okay, yeah, here's the other one. All right. So you want to have something stating that you, your name in all lowercase lettering, are in fact a non-resident. All right. So what else? Then it says, letter C, the jurisdiction in which the vehicle is registered allows vehicles that are registered in that state to be operated tax-free. Well, as that's me, yes. So don't need a letter for it, but yes, I speak for my own nation. Uh, the vehicles operate in accordance with the rules adopted by the Secretary of State based on the gross weight. I don't have a truck or a diesel or anything or a tank, so I'm, I'm good. But if I had a tank, there'd be, there'd be some people who wouldn't have a home to go to. <laughs> Meet your maker. Um, it says foreign owned or operated vehicles entering the state with special equipment. That doesn't apply. If the owner of any vehicle exempted moves to the state, if the vehicle is purchased by in or by or leased by a resident, the vehicle immediately becomes subject to the laws. So that means if you're one of them or you claim to be one of them, you claim that you're a resident, then your vehicle has to be. So I have that in here. Um, all right, I don't got to cover up some of my numbers here, but my Lovitica national government is registered to, or is registered as a tax exempt entity. So not only does it own my vehicle, but I'm also using the same name for my trust. All right. But I call the vehicle, vehicles in its own private trust, but it's operated by my nation. You can do it that way if you want. 
Um, I also have in information here about being a national. I've got my uh, retail purchase agreement for the vehicle. Um, which shows that it was purchased entitled immediately to the trust. So I have owner or it has ownership. I control it. Um, I also have an affidavit of my name change. Okay. Why do I have that? Now, this is just me. You guys don't have to do that. But for me, when I told you guys about creating your own IDs, okay, and not using an address, um, Mine has Lovitica National Government. That's what I operate under. It's its own private tax exempt entity. I created, I have my own private name that most of you guys don't know about when I operate. So when I'm in my vehicle, if I'm truly going to be foreign, I have my foreign ID, which is made on idcreators.com. Scannable. I can put in whatever information I want in these barcodes. So when they scan it, that's what they're going to get. That's what I tell them who I say I am. In this, if I haven't done anything criminal, they don't don't even and can't even shouldn't even be running this in the first place. So this private ID is going to match my tr now in my trust. I have my legal name as an operator of the trust, and I've got my private name. Okay, so that either of them can operate the trust, the vehicles, the bank accounts, the whatever else. Both of those names are listed. So this affidavit of name change here correlates with my privately made ID. My information submitted to the DMV has that it's been transferred from the legal person into this trust. And but these two people, the legal name and the private name, can operate the trust or any of the um, products that the trust owns. So if you wants to see my ID, Give him that because when he runs my then, because he's like, These plates, these plates don't come back as anything because I'm a foreign national. So, when you're talking to them, you should be explaining to them that you are a foreign national or a non resident because this is what's in their computers, they understand this language. After that, by federal law, they are not supposed to harass you, bother you, or ask you what country are you from or anything. That's a federal offense, that is for the ICE. Immigrations department, okay? So, and you can inform them of that. And you can tell them if you're not familiar with this information, you either need to let me go, am I being detained? Or, well, uh, am I free to go? Well, you're, you 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 have to answer these questions. Well, you can't ask me about these certain things. I can, I, you're, I can only, I'm only gonna answer what I wanna answer in the first place, but you do not play mute. Don't just go, just say, nope. I'm not, I do not answer questions. I do not answer questions. Nope, I do not answer questions. You asking me if I, what country I'm from or whatever, that is a federal offense and I don't want to get you in trouble. So I'm not going to answer that. I don't have to answer that. And you're going to, you're going to direct them to the Department of State. And so you should have a letter like I have here with the Department of State's information so that they can contact them, which they already have in their computer. A lot of people still use their, their passport, which is also good. I do have mine on standby if I need that. And I also have my statement for police. Okay, for them to read. It essentially says my rights, silence, including providing any documents or information that may incriminate me or be used against me. I require having counsel present by before answering any questions. I do not consent to any searches. Saying no does not mean that I have something to hide. I have the right to know who you are when you are acting in public capacity. I have number five, I have the right to know if I'm being detained or arrested and why. If I'm not being detained or arrested, then I'm free to go. If somebody, if they detain you, stop and you are unable to leave and they say, yes, you're being detained, that is a lawsuit. That is a federal lawsuit. You are being deprived. Now, they can call it a Terry stop or or whatever else. Um, but what is it? They have to have an articulable reason, um, reasonable suspicion. All right. I think it's the RAS. 
um, which means they have to believe that you've committed a crime. Operating, pulling you over because you have a private plate, that's them doing something illegal. Um, but if they don't have reasonable suspicion that you're committing a crime, they're not supposed to stop you. That's a federal offense of your rights to travel and privacy. All right. So, but if they do detain you, even for, uh, I think the, the court kind of said five minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, I think is reasonable time to just kind of see what's going on. But if they have a crime, what criminal thing do you believe I have done? Not do, not, not, this is not criminal. Even if they don't know it, that just means, and they hate when you say this, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You understand and operate with state law. This is constitutional and private. I'm outside of your jurisdiction unless I've committed a crime. All right. So it goes on. Number six, I am not acting in commercial capacity as a driver or a motor vehicle. I'm not in trade. I'm not in traffic. I'm not in transportation. Um, as defined under 49 U.S.C. 31301. And therefore, motor vehicle codes are not applicable in if traveling um, by the means of the day to get from one place to another. Seven, civil rights violations will be litigated in federal courts because they are violating your civil rights. I hereby invoke and refuse to waive all of the following rights and privileges afforded to me by the United States Constitution. I invoke and refuse and waive and refuse to waive, excuse me, my Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. I invoke and refuse to waive my Sixth Amendment right to counsel of my choice. I invoke and refuse to waive my Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. Because it's not just you they're searching and seizing, it's your vehicle. I'm not waiving any of my rights to those things. Um, I am not presently under arrest or under in investigatory detention or a Terry stop, so please allow me to leave. The claim to exercise, the exercise of a constitutional right cannot be converted into a crime. Miller v. U.S. 230 F2 2D 486 and 489. With no injured party, a complaint is invalid on its face. Gibson v. Boyle, 139, Arizona, 512. You are being recorded audio and video for my safety. So you can put that information in there. I also have another list of terms, um, which are all available, I believe, in my right to travel packet. Um, and then my other one here is underneath these codes. Private automobiles are not required to be registered by law. Okay, and then it breaks down with commercial. This is all in the, uh, the right to travel packet. And that's pretty much it. Once you have all of that together, your right to travel binder is set. If I miss anything, let me know. Um, you can also put in there a copy of like the Constitution. Um, you can put uh, any statements, your explanatory statement in there. You can put in other affidavits of what and who you are. You can, um, you know, anything that'll support you being private or operating lawfully is always going to be a good thing. So that's about it, guys. Um, once again, unless something new pops up, we've pretty much covered everything in Right to Travel, everybody. Even if you're an OG and you've never been bothered, you should have a majority of all this stuff in your travel binder and follow the right travel information, informational video here and all the other ones I have. You can look up Travel Binder, James C. Lovett on YouTube or on my channel or Right to Travel, James C. Lovett um, on YouTube or, you know, on Google and find my other videos. And I also did a five hour live on it covering all the steps and things. I've done multiple lives where um, all of my lives are up on YouTube, on my main channel. Go to the playlist that says lives. You can look through them there. And we talked, some of them were how to find your state's um, right to travel or surrender forms. You can Google search, YouTube search that. Uh, how to find your state's driver's license, cancel forms, James C. Lovett. You can look those up as well. We've got those in the lives. So 
Those are always will be up. You guys can check those out. Otherwise, guys, that's it. Take care. Travel safe out there. And, um, you know, don't do anything that's going to attract negative attention that it would if you had a regular license. So do your thing and operate safely. Now, one last thing, I guess, on mine. So when I made my, my ID, I put on their official travel ID, air, land, and sea, and world access. Okay. Um, I also put mine labeled as a national ID. Now, why would I do that? Because anywhere, this is my law, okay, it's court cases, that the government does not provide a service or an ID, you're allowed to create your own. I mean, you're actually always allowed to create your own forms, your own ID, whatever else. It just means, though, some place like a bank or whatever else may possibly not accept that. So one of the things I've been pondering, oh, we'll save that for the VIP section. So remember, you can join the VIP if you guys go to uh, YouTube, go to my main channel, click join, and then you can subscribe and catch all the behind the scenes commentaries, right? But otherwise, this is 99% all you need right here, everything you've got. And if you follow all the steps, put your vehicle in private trust, update the DMV, get your title on the back of the title, write the name of the trust that you are transferring it over to. Oh, that's a good thing too. So if you go to DMV and you tell them you want to transfer it to the trust, you can say, I sold it to my trust for one gold piece because remember, they do not operate with gold or silver. That makes it even more private for your documents to say this was sold for one piece of gold or one troy ounce of gold or whatever you want to do. Otherwise, you can say, my vehicle is being gifted to this private foreign trust. Right, so I'll give you guys that that little extra piece there. The rest of it, VIP section. All right, you guys take care. Thank you guys for supporting me monthly with your donations. And remember, you can send donations in directly to blacksite32.com. If you do donations there, that does not get you on the VIP list, but you can get the VIP mailing list, the newsletter, by signing up there and donating. But if you want to support me monthly, which you can do through my site because it links to PayPal and PayPal then allows you to, you know, bill you monthly a dollar, $5, $20, $1,000, 10,000, quarter million for the wealthy people out there, million dollars, half million, meet me halfway. You can do whatever you want to do to help me out monthly by going to black site and clicking on donations and setting a one-time or a, you know, monthly, whatever. If you want access to the videos though, that won't do it. It will be YouTube, join, and then pay the monthly subscription. And that gets you access by going back then to my YouTube channel. And you'll see where it'll open up and say members videos only. And then you can watch all of those and find out all the extra stuff in the background. Other than that, guys, take care, travel safe, and I'll talk to you guys next time.